Welcome to another epic mic battle, this time a pair of $400 studio broadcast microphones, really be used for anything, the Shure SM7B and the AKG C214. This video is sponsored by Credit Card Debt. Neither of these mics have been provided to me by anyone, just sharing this because I'm interested and hopefully someone else out there is interested as well. A couple things to preface this video. As always for my videos comparing microphones or talking about microphones, I'm really coming at it as somebody who's doing content creation for YouTube or, you know, voiceover, streaming, podcasts, those kinds of things, and not for musicians. So if you're interested in how these mics sound for either instruments or for singing, then this is not going to be the video for you. I am recording both mics simultaneously, and I'll just be switching back and forth between them throughout the video. Just check the lower thirds to see which mic you're currently listening to. And right now the audio signal is just the raw audio. If and when I do any processing, I'll be sure to let you know. Both these mics have switches to change the frequency response, but as of now, they're both kind of in their standard flat response. I do have my window open, so I hope that's not too annoying, but I kind of thought it would be an interesting way to compare these two microphones. The biggest distinguishing factor between these two microphones is basically the design of the capsule. So you've got a dynamic mic with the Shure SM7B and a condenser mic with the AKG C214. The SM7B should be quieter, should pick up a lot less of that background noise, potentially, than this one. But I just wanted to see if that is indeed the case. Why is this comparison relevant or why is it meaningful? Mostly just because they're both the same price. Sometimes the AKG is a little bit less, around 350 but I think its normal retail price is $400. You know, they could potentially have the same use case, the same applications, both for recording voiceovers like this, but also for music, uh, whether that's singing or recording instruments. They're both ideally suited for all of those applications as well. Again, the major difference between them being dynamic versus condenser. So just talk a little bit about what comes with each microphone. So what do you get for $400? With the SM7B, it's pretty much what you see is what you get. Uh, the microphone, obviously, uh, which is attached to the yoke. Uh, you get this windscreen included and you also get a puffier uh, windscreen which is designed for like kind of close-up vocal work. It comes with a 3 8 to 1 quarter thread adapter for putting on a variety of stands and boom arms. You get a little bit more with the AKG. Obviously you get the mic. You also get this shock mount which is pretty cool. You also get a nice hard case. You also get a windscreen with it. You do not get a pop filter so I've added this pop filter on just so I don't <laughs> blow out the microphone every just to make it easier for you to listen to this video. We'll do some tests, some direct tests, comparing the two microphones for things like plosives, testing the proximity effect, how it sounds when you get really close, how it sounds when you're a little bit further away from each microphone, uh, as well as the off-axis rejection, so how they sound when you are speaking to them in different axes than the ones that they're designed to pick up from. And I will also have my wife record something so you can hear how it sounds on a woman's voice. So let's talk about build quality and just some of the physical features of each microphone. They're both outstandingly well made. Uh, they're both all metal, uh, very durable, very solid feeling. The SM7Bs look quite a bit denser and heavier feeling than the AKG. And actually, if I take it out of the shock mount you can just see how much smaller it is it's a little guy here but again it's all metal construction there's a little bit of flex on the windscreen but it doesn't feel cheap it's not like it's going to dent um, maybe if you dropped it on a jagged surface or you know it hit just the right way it might dent the finish on the sm7b is susceptible to getting scuffed and marked up so if that's a consideration to you just make sure that you're really careful with handling that microphone the finish on the akg feels a little bit more like it will withstand scuffing and scraping. They both have some physical switches. So like I alluded to earlier, um, there are switches on the bottom of the SM7B to engage both a high pass filter, which will just cut out some of the low frequencies, as well as a presence boost, which will boost some of the mid frequencies. The C214 has a high pass filter as well, and it also has a negative 20 dB pad. So if you're recording a really loud source of audio and you need to bring its sensitivity down by negative 20 dB, you can do that. So as you're listening to the mics, feel free to jump down in the comments and let me know how you think they sound, which one you prefer, and why. I'm just really interested in what you guys think about it. Kind of wanted some feedback to see if you're in line with how I'm thinking as well about how they sound. Okay, so let's go ahead and compare these microphones, starting with plosive performance. I'm going to move the windscreen out of the way of the AKG. Peter Parker, pop some popcorn. Peter Parker, pop some popcorn. Peter Parker pops some popcorn. And now for the SM7B. 
Peter Parker pop some popcorn. Peter Parker pop some popcorn. Peter Parker pop some popcorn. And now I'm just going to get a little bit further away, maybe about a foot from both microphones so you can hear how they pick me up. So here I'm about a foot and a half away from the AKG C214 and this is how it sounds from about a foot away. Obviously I'm at the same distance away from the Shure SM7B and this is how that microphone sounds with sirens in the background from about a foot and a half away from the front of the microphone. And now we'll just compare the proximity effect to see how both microphones sound when you get really close to the microphones. I'm going to put the windscreen back in front of the AKG because it just gets really boomy without it. So here is the AKG C214 when I'm about two inches away from the front of the microphone. How does the proximity effect sound with this microphone? This is without the high pass filter. And now for the short SM7B, this is what it sounds like talking about I don't know, an inch away from the front of the windscreen of the Shure SM7B. Again, this is in flat mode without the high pass filter engaged. So now let's do an off axis rejection test starting with the AKG. This is what it sounds like from the front and rotating around to the side of the AKG C214. This is what it sounds like from 90 degrees. This is what it sounds like from the rear of the AKG C214. This is what it sounds like from the other 90 degree angle of the AKG C214. And finally coming back around to the front of the AKG. And moving on to the Shure SM7B. This is what it sounds like talking to the front of the Shure SM7B. Rotating around 90 degrees. This is what the side, talking into the side of the Shure SM7B sounds like. Now talking into the rear of the Shure SM7B. That's how that sounds. Sounds like this. Coming back to the other 90 degree angle talking into the side of the Shure SM7B and now coming back to the front of the SM7B. And since they both have a high pass switch, I figured I would engage both of them so you can hear how they sound with some of the lower end frequencies cut out of the microphone. The SM7B has a presence boost switch as well, but I'm going to leave that off since the C214 doesn't have that. But so now you can hear how they sound with that high pass filter engage. This might work for different instruments that you might want to record, but it also might work for your voice and also it might sound better if you want to get really close to them to take away some of that really deep low end that's going to be emphasized the closer you get to the microphone. So I'll go ahead and talk right on top of the C214. This is how it sounds about two inches away from the front of the capsule with the high pass filter engaged. Again, this is the C214 with the high pass filter engaged, engaging the proximity effect. And for the Shure SM7B, I am right on top of the windscreen and this is how it sounds with the high pass filter engaged, the Shure SM7B and the proximity effect with the high pass filter engaged. Life and sound and music go on in all kinds of weather, but everything is worth a listen. Window is an interactive sound essay about listening and everyday experience. It was made in 2012, the centenary of the birth of John Cage not to be confused with Nicolas Cage, and inspired by his attitude towards listening and everyday experience. Window was awarded the 2012 New Media Writing Prize. The iPad version is recommended and can be downloaded at the Apple Store for free or try the original web-based version. Turn up the sound and take a listen. Life and sound and music go on in all kinds of weather, but everything is worth a listen. Window is an interactive sound essay about listening and everyday experience. It was made in 2012, the centenary of the birth of John Cage, and inspired by his attitude towards listening and everyday experience. Window was awarded the 2012 New Media Writing Prize. The iPad version is recommended and can be downloaded at the Apple Store for free or try the original web-based version. Turn up the sound and listen. In conclusion, let me just start off by saying both of these mics probably need a little bit of extra gear in order to sound their best. The AKG really does need a pop filter. It can be very susceptible to plosives, so if you're not careful with that, it could be a problem for your recording. If you're a little bit further away, then that's going to do a lot to minimize those plosives, but if you do want to engage that proximity effect and also reduce its capacity to pick up a lot of ambient noise, the closer you get to the mic, the lower you can turn it down, the better it's going to reject, you know, all the other things that are going on in your environment. So with that being said, I would highly recommend that you get a pop filter for this microphone. The included windscreen doesn't do enough to reject plosives. And I also found that it changes the tone of the microphone in a way that 
it just kind of really reduces the, I don't know, the quality of it, in my opinion. So I wouldn't recommend, for me anyway, I didn't find that I liked the way that this, the mic sounded with the windscreen. The SM7B, being such a quiet microphone, definitely needs something like a cloud lifter, um, some kind of mic activator in order to boost the gain up, unless you have just a really powerful audio interface with a great preamp that's not only loud, but also really clean. You're definitely gonna need something like that with the SM7B, unless you just have a really loud voice or you stay really close to the microphone very consistently. You can do that, but you just have to be very consistent and disciplined in how you use the microphone if you don't wanna get something like a cloud lifter. And again, you don't have to spend 150 on a cloud lifter. There's tons of alternative, well, there's at least a handful of decent alternatives that are quite a bit cheaper than the cloud lifter, but I would highly recommend getting some mic activator with the SM7B. So which one you want obviously is gonna depend on which one you thought sounded better. Also, whether you prefer the way one looks over the other, if that's important to you. And really the most important distinction, aside from the sound quality or the differences in sound, is whether you think a dynamic mic or a condenser mic is better suited to you and your environment and what you're doing. Anyway, appreciate it. Hopefully you got something out of that video. If you liked it, feel free to hit the like button. If you hated it, go ahead and hit the dislike button a couple times and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this comparing microphones or really anything about content creation and video production. If that interests you, feel free to subscribe and maybe I'll see you in the next video.